you really seem to emphasize the idea of, of everything being harvested and being at you know at your fingertips right away because that's food as secret. we know it these days has a huge lag time right and, and that's so the what you're talking about is just shrinking down that lag time so that right it still feels like this uh, imagine this uh, if you look at what's you look at when the, once again energy and carbon footprint imagine the carbon footprint of growing something in Iowa and trucking it all the way to here and then you because the food now has gone three or four days without water, it's got to be propped up somehow, it's got to be hydrated, it's got to be bagged, it's got more carbon, more oil. By the time you get that food here, and by the way, you're going to lose 30 to 40 percent of it before it gets to market because of all the problems in transportation, problems off the farm, and that's an interesting number. More, about 40 percent of the produce grown in this country is wasted. Wasted. Yeah. That's billions and billions of pounds of food. I mean, we could feed a continent. It's getting food bruised that we, and that thrown we, away before it ever well, gets to the or store. Or gets, it gets stuck in a truck and it gets too hot or a truck, whatever happens, the food, it doesn't make it to market or it just doesn't get purchased. It gets to the supermarket and it doesn't get bought. Right. You know, so maybe the market purchased too much of these and too, much, too, too few of these and they throw it out. A lot of the food goes to food banks, but then it, once again, it's sitting in food banks and it's got to get out there. So how do, the first thing to me is how do you make a system more efficient? And I, that, this to me solves that problem. It's the most efficient food growing system I've ever seen. Now, and can this solve all the world's problems? No way. I mean, we have so many people that's like I said, I can feed 50 people out of my little farm. You know, the big picture here is uh, efficiency. So what if we, for example, created vertical farms that were mentored by vets teaching youth? I mean, what a basic idea. Yeah. I mean, that's not genius at all. It's, it's, it's too obvious. And what if we then came up with multiple types of farming, for example, vertical gardening. Here is horizontal hydroponic in garden socks. This mm -hmm. is another interesting system here where we can actually take a sock that's biodegradable. This, this sock will biodegrade in about a year and a half, so it's, it holds it long enough. Mm -hmm. We pack it with a medium that we like and grow plants in it. For now, now you can actually grow on top of asphalt. Wow. No longer need soil. Yeah. We're growing all kinds of crops. If you look down here, there's tomatoes, there's there's uh, green and red cabbage, this is blue kale, those are beets. And you have plenty of basils, which I like. And the basils, all these different types of basils. Yeah, there's this is a Thai basil. In fact, taste, taste what sweet Thai basil tastes like, hydroponically grown on the ground. So this is this would be horizontal hydroponics. Mm -hmm. But the significance of this, for you example, really get that licorice flavor with it. Yeah. Yeah. Really Imagine good. this. What if I heard a number like there's 30 square miles of uh, pavement in Los Angeles or unused parking lots? Okay. Michelle Obama herself declared most of a lot of areas in LA food deserts. Why aren't we growing food on top of those parking lots? There you go. How easy is it? Imagine this is a parking lot. That's a, that's asphalt. There it is. And what's interesting is. The heat that comes off the asphalt is beneficial because we want that heat. So we can now grow winter crops in cold areas because they're getting the radiant heat and the, the black blacktop is absorbing the heat, which is what the plants want. So it's right. actually helping heat the plant up, helping it grow. <laughs> okay, so imagine parking lots all, all over Los Angeles and, for example, Santa Ana. What if the Great Park could become the Great Supermarket? There's a, a, a new developer that's been working on this for a while, for the last five, six years, Five Point Properties in Lennar. They're building a beautiful development around here. They're gonna produce something like 10,000 homes over the next four or five years. What if those 10,000 homes could have this supermarket here? What if, what if they could actually get on bicycles and ride around 100 acres, stop in at themed farm stands? For example, here's the fruit tree farm stand. Here's all the vegetables, here's the onions, here's the this, the beets. And they could run, run around here and shop and get stuff now. And a lot of it could be you pick, right? We've just completely changed the face of agriculture by providing 100 acres of local food access, super healthy food access, to 10,000 new homes moving in. Now, I don't think, you know, Ralph's is gonna love that idea because we're gonna be, <laughs> you know, kind of in competition, but maybe they could decide to join us. Yeah. Why not? And by the way, guess what? Now you've now you've offered 10,000 new families, which could be 50,000 people. Fabulous access to some of the finest food on the planet. Be interesting for 
Western medicine to study that group and see how their diseases go down.